Fully Masked on Creates podcast. I'm Tori, or Victoria. Um, I go by Tori. And I am hailing from South Range, Michigan. Uh, closest town to be 10 minutes away, Houghton, Michigan. That's what people know if they know something. Uh, it's in the Keweenaw Peninsula of the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, so the northern part of the U.S. Uh, let's see. I'm here to talk about knitting, uh, crocheting, spinning, occasionally, hopefully, weaving. Uh, just about anything that you can think of making, that's why I'm here. I'm a maker, and I love doing it, so I want to share it with you all. Uh, let's see here. A little background about me. Obviously, I'm a maker. Uh, by trade right now, I am a bookkeeper, but I actually went to school for graphic design, and I dabbled in a lot of the fiber arts. So, that kind of brings me here. I kind of wanted to talk about where all of this started because a lot of people are interested in where you learn to knit and how you learn to knit. So I figured I'd just kind of, in this first episode, just kind of tie that in and be like, hey, this is how I learned. So a little bit about me, I've I've been a maker all my life. Uh, from when I was a little kid, my, I would get those like little klutz books, if any of you remember those. And I would just make all of the things. You could leave me in a corner and I'd, I'd be happy all day long just making things. Um, I remember it was like 6th grade. How old, old are you when you're in 6th grade? But it was about 6th grade and I remember that summer my mom was asking me, hey, my your aunt wants to teach you how to crochet, do you want to? And I was like, sure, I don't know what that is, but why not? I didn't put any thought into it. I was like, whatever, why not? It sounds fun. And I'm a maker, so I'm going to try everything. Well, that summer we went on vacation. We all went to my grandma's and we're having fun and she sat down and she gave me this little kit and it was in this Scooby-Doo bag and I mean that had me sold because I still love Scooby-Doo to this day but then it was like Scooby-Doo. I was that kid. And it was some yarn and a crochet hook and some instructions and we sat down on the couch and she started showing me how to crochet. And I remember that summer basically at that point on that's literally all I did was crochet. Um, except for swimming because you can't keep me out of a lake if there is one, but otherwise it was crocheting. Um, and I've never looked back. It would probably be a summer or two later at my, well, fall, at my birthday. Uh, the same aunt gave me a huge box and it was, I was all excited. I was like, what is this? And inside was a ton of yarn and some knitting needles and a how to knit book. She didn't actually know how to knit. Uh, and my mom doesn't never knew how to knit or crochet, so I didn't learn it from her. But my aunt was like, well, you seem really good at this. Maybe you want to try knitting. And I was trying to learn how to knit. I, I sat down with that book immediately, and it was knitting U.S. style, and I just could not get it. And my grandma, who is a knitter, was sitting in the corner in her chair, knitting on an afghan, watching me. And I could just see her getting frustrated for me. And finally she just said stop and she pulled me over to her corner and showed me how to knit the basic knit stitch and cast on. And after that I taught everything myself. I learned continental then. So that, that changed up instruction a little bit. But I love it. And ever since then I haven't looked back. Nowadays I knit more than I crochet. I own a spinning wheel. I do spin. Um, thank you to my fiber professor at college. She taught me how to spin. I've never looked back. I own a, a, a baby little tabletop loom thing, rigid head of loom. I have not. I have yet to warp it. Um, so hopefully that'll be coming down the lane too. But otherwise, if it's something I can make, I'll make it. I love it. That's me. Let's see here. I've got a timer running because this camera is going to shut off in about five minutes and I want to beat it. But anyway, for now, this is our humble setup, humble bedroom. My husband loves tigers, so our friends will be sitting back here always because he loves his tigers. And I, I love buying stuffed animals, so I buy him tigers. It works. But anyway, um, the structure is probably going to be about the same every month, maybe. We're going with month right now because I do work a day job. And I can only film when the lighting is semi-decent, so we're going to work with it. I don't know how often I'll do this. I'm hoping this will this will work because my husband is encouraging me to do this and it would be fantastic if I could get one of these going because I live for watching these. So I figured I'd start with finished objects 
of course, first episode started off right without actually having it in hand. It's actually in the wash, drying, so I don't have it with me, but I finished a pair of vanilla socks. Um, I knit all my socks pretty much vanilla. Uh, afterthought heel, toe up, um, but the afterthought heel where you insert the little string for the heel, so it's kind of like the forethought, afterthought heel. And I knitted out of the Knit Picks Felici, the steamer trunk colorway. So I'll try to insert a picture here so you can see it while I'm talking about it. I knit just about all of my socks on US size 1, what are they, 2.25 millimeter needles. Um, I have a couple sets of Knit Picks, I think I have a 32 inch cord, I don't remember. But I magic loop all my socks. And cool. And so that is what I currently, well, my only FO actually at as of this point. I have finished a few things, but far enough back that I do have a blog. Oh, I'm new to this. Can you tell? I haven't introduced anything yet. So I'm just going to put that in right in here now. Uh, you can find me on most social media sites. I'm most active on Instagram at, as Victoria Schwanke. I'll have everything down below. But Victoria Schwanke. Uh, Ravelry is Lil Westy. I'll have that listed because that's a weird name. Um, I'm on Facebook, Victoria Schaffner. Uh, I think those are like the three places that you can find me right now. And then also YouTube, which probably is still listed as Victoria Schwanke and I probably should change that to Schaffner. But for it for now. That's where you can find me. Um, and then I have a blog, willymastodon.wordpress.com. Uh, so definitely check that out. Show notes will be there. All, all of the stuff I've made in the past will be there. So if you're curious about what I'm making or what FOs that I've had in the past, they'll be up on that blog. So take a look there because that's definitely worth, worth checking out. Uh, I got married this year, so there's even some pretty wedding shawl pictures there, so you might want to take a look. So moving on, I'm going to move on to works in progress, and I've got two, two right now. Uh, well, technically three, if you count the gigantic granny square afghan that I'll be working on forever, but that's currently in a bag up there, and I don't really want to get it and knock over my camera. So I'm going to start with socks. When I finished that last pair of socks, for like the past year now, my husband has been asking me to knit him a pair of socks. And I just never had the yarn. So when we went on our honeymoon this summer, I was in a Joann's of all places with my friend, and I was like, oh my gosh, I need to buy him yarn for socks. So I ended up picking up just some basics. I didn't want to get something like ridiculous indie dye or anything because I don't know he's pretty hard on socks and I don't know how these will wear so I just got these to start uh, but I got Premier Yarn Serenity Sock in the black colorway nothing fancy oh my ball bands are like completely flat and destroyed um, this is just for heels toes and cuffs I wanted to try to stretch the yarn because he has bigger feet and I wasn't sure, like I have big feet too, but I wasn't sure if I'd need more yarn for his. And then in the main colorway, I have Patton's Croy socks in the turquoise stripes colorway. Just your basic. Um, I always hand wind these into balls just because they fit in my little project bag that I use for everything that I sewed forever ago. It goes with me everywhere. That's the little clip because, you know, clip it on everything. Uh, but I'm not very far. I have just, I am only, yeah, I'm really not very far. But I've got a toe, so I have a toe. It's something. I'm going to knit a little bit farther and then test it on his feet because I want to make sure they actually fit. But these are actually being knit on, I believe this is a one and a half, so 2.5 millimeter needle. I, um, these are are these actually? I don't remember. These might be sock rockets. I don't remember for sure. Don't quote me on that. But they're slightly larger, but I love them, so I wanted to knit on them, and I figured, well, his socks need to be bigger, so I'll knit them on these. They won't be quite as sturdy and bulletproof, but that works. Um, side note, most of my socks are 62 stitch socks. Um, his are going to be, er, 62, 64 stitch socks. His are going to be 72, so 
that is that. That is my first work in progress. My second work in progress in this gigantic, I, I went on a kick and I made three box bags. And this is the biggest of them, and the sock one is the smallest. And I haven't made any sense, which is kind of sad. But my next work in progress is called Sutures. And I don't think I will be able to pronounce her name properly. Camille Descato? I, I don't know. I really, I'm not sure. I'm sorry. I'm going to butcher, I butchered your name and I'm sorry. But I love your pattern. Um, it's this here. It's a really long, really, really long wrap, textured wrap, three color shawl, um, kind of like a pentagon shape because it is on the diagonal pentagon. Oh, no, 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 not Pentagon. Scratch that, reverse it, take that away forever. But it's going to be this shawl, except I did my own thing. And I picked some very, very different colors. And, of course, in complete Tory fashion, I am playing a serious game of Yarn Chicken and probably going to have to cut out half of the repeats in this shawl. But by now, I have gotten the first color... Um, this is Madeline Tosh. I think this is the black walnut colorway. Um, so that is this first section. The second section is Manos del, Urugu Manos del Urugu Uruguay. I'm sorry, pronunciation is going to suck and I'm going to have to look because I lost the take on this one so I'm not really sure. It's all off Ravelry. Um, the Allegria, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce this name. It'll be in the show notes. But it's a really crazy crazy color. And then another Mad Tosh, um, Marina Light, and this one is going to be, this is the Esoteric colorway. And I'm pretty much, I've gotten to the part where I start reintroducing all the colors again, and like I said, I have almost no yarn left. So I'm basically going to have to stop this now. Um, I'm going to knit this section still because I have a little more than that, but <laughs> yeah, I, I had enough yardage. I didn't do a gauge swatch because I normally don't with my shawls and I think I want to needle size up. So all of that played into the, I'm not going to have enough yarn, but we'll see what comes out of it. We'll see. So that was my second project. Um, and my last work in progress for today. I figured I'd share an upcoming cast on with you just because I'm excited about it. Um, which means we'll kind of back up a little bit. Um, two nights ago, I was looking for my wrist warmers, my hand mitts, and I could not find them. I destroyed our apartment. I couldn't find them. Turns out that they were still at my dad's. So, yay for packing and moving. But I found them. But in that evening, I decided, hey, I've been feeling stagnant as a knitter. I haven't really learned much new recently. I've been knitting a lot of lace shawls, but I knit lace, so it's not new. And there are a few things I don't know how to do or haven't done hardly at all and I want to learn, so color work is one of those things and brioche is one, one of those things. And I am I watch a lot of podcasts, but I'm also about a year behind, so keep this in mind when I'm talking. But the most recent podcast that I had watched was the Brooklyn Knit Folk podcast, and Jacqueline was talking about these hand mitts she had finished called the Underwing Mitts. And I absolutely loved them, and of course I'm ambitious, and I was just like, I'm going to cast these on. I'm going to tackle my fear of color work, and I'm going to cast on an amazing project. So I immediately went on Ravelry, purchased the pattern, and I have the yarn. Some the last of the bags I had made. I'm using Knit Picks palette in black and white. Super original. I know. I don't have needles picked out. I'm going to have to watch Gage because I've never knit color work before. Well, not never. I did it once like five years ago and it didn't work. So I left it to the wayside. Um, so I know I'm going to have to worry about that and the pattern sizing can tend to be tight. So I'll have to watch. But I'm looking forward to it. I want to kind of just dive right in and see what I can do and all of those sweaters going around right now that are so beautifully color worked. I just want to have the skills and the knowledge to just dive right in and make one of those. But I want to do something smaller first. Uh, that is my current wish list to cast on. 
Let's see here. I keep checking time because my t my my beautiful camera is not very nice and it cuts off in very short segments. So, well, the next thing, normally I would share stash enhancements, but I'm trying to behave right now and save money and not buy all kinds of yarn. So I don't have any, actually. I purchased some yarn this summer, but that's all been on, up on my blog for a while now. So if you're curious to see what I purchased this summer, this you can just head over there and I've got blog posts talking about all the shenanigans that have happened and everything like that. But I decided since I don't have stash enhancements, I would share some things that I've purchased recently that I'm enjoying. Um, first thing I'm really enjoying that I'm not going to share with you now is a new set of pots and pans. You have no idea the difference it makes. Or maybe you do, but I was excited and my husband laughed at me. Another thing I'm really enjoying, the fact that we have all of our bookshelves up and all of our books are out. Moving kind of sucks and so having all of those books out finally is the best because it's fall and I'm excited and I'm ready to go so that's awesome. In the line of books I thought I'd share some books today that I'm interested in. Uh, I recently bought this. I've seen this kind of floating around for everywhere and I just I decided I needed to finally have it because I've dabbled in knitwear design and I just eventually I want to just do it but we'll see. But um, the Japanese Knitting Stitch Bible I don't really want to try to say who this is by, because I'll butcher it. Um, he told me, Shida, ah, I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher it, but this book is awesome. I've been paging through it. Um, I'm really excited to try some of these stitch patterns and just see where it takes me. So this was a great addition to the crafting bookshelf. You may have guessed that I'm kind of obsessed with books of all kinds and that includes cookbooks so I finally bought this I know everybody and their uncle has this one but I've been looking at this for months like when it was first saw when I at least first saw it in stores I was like I want to buy this and I held off until a week ago and I finally bought it I'm so happy I did and I had no idea who these people were until my husband I got, I got my husband completely hooked on HGTV and I haven't even watched it and like I have at least five years. So it's kind of ironic because now he leaves that on all the time, which is fine because it's entertaining. But I had no idea who these people were until I got him hooked on that channel on accident. So now it's even more cool. But this book has been really cool. I want to make knit. I want to bake and cook half the things out of here already. And I'm only like this way far through looking at it. I've got most of the book left to read, but super excited about this. And just in general, graphic designer, side note, this book is designed beautifully, so it's an, it's eye candy too. Highly recommend. Um, let's see here. So with that, that's about everything content-wise I have to show you. This is going to be pretty short. Um, they'll probably, well, pretty short in the middle, because a lot of knit, knit podcasts go in the hour realm, and... I don't have enough time to output enough stuff to make it that long, I feel. But I figured I'd share some light, light, life lately. Ah, life lately. Keeping busy. I, um, you don't know me yet, but I work at a grocery store. So that is my day job. I'm a bookkeeper. And I do a lot of stuff. So it's a lot of running around for that. Um, I'm always knitting in the evenings. This has been the best part. Uh, my husband was working nights and he moved to days. So now we have that, actually have evenings to sit together and I've been getting a lot of knitting done in this time. So that's been awesome. Uh, fall is here. Fall is here. And I am so excited about fall. I am drinking all of the tea and reading all the books and snuggling in all of the hoodies and afghans and just enjoying it completely and utterly. Um, Ironically here, the leaves are pretty much turning color, and 10 minutes down the road to Houghton, they're hardly changing color. So that's a little weird, but I don't mind it, because I love the fall colors. Uh, yeah. Nothing exciting coming down the road, other than just keeping busy and 
possibly a trip to the local yarn store. I haven't been there in ages and I kind of want to see what there is, but I kind of want to keep my money, but I kind of don't. And just casting on those mitts. I'm super excited about that. But otherwise, that's been life. Life's kind of boring, but it's perfect because it means I can do all of the things. Um, working with different people and just keeping busy. I'm rambling now, so I might as well just say, if you decided to watch this podcast, thank you. Uh, like I said earlier, I don't know how often I'll be making this. Maybe once a month right now, just because of time constraints, because I'd love if this was my full-time job. But it is not my full-time job right now, <laughs> so um, I have to keep sight of that. But, uh, um, yeah, I'll see if I can keep coming back for this, and hopefully the setup will keep getting refined and better as we go, and you won't have to see stuff everywhere. <laughs> I'll get life together and it won't be quite as stuff. Um, but yeah. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, tune into all those different social media sites if you're looking to see more of what I'm doing on a regular basis. Like I said, Instagram is the place to find me if you want to know more about me and what I am doing from day to day. Um, other than that, check out the blog. Uh, like this if you enjoyed it. Um, share it with your friends. Obviously, nobody knows who I am right now, so if you enjoy it, share it with your friends. And with that, I will see you next time. Bye!